This station is a demonstration of ear examination or otoscopy. In the exam, this is a mannequin station and there might be two components or just one component. One component is the ear examination and in addition they might also ask you to demonstrate hearing tests namely the Rennie's and the Weber's test. The mannequin which is given in the exam is a very similar mannequin to this and what it has is the ear condition demonstrator. That is there are different conditions on this little sheet of card, board card and then depending upon which condition the examiner wants to test you on the relevant condition will be kept in the relevant slot so that when you examine you will be examining a condition which the examiner knows uh, that you are examining. After your introduction to the uh, examiner and the examiner taking uh, your candidate number the procedure is same like any other mannequin station that is you tell your rule of eights to the examiner which is you will introduce yourself to the patient you will uh, check the patient's identity you will check the, uh, explain the procedure to the patient and then you will take the patient's consent with particular reference what you tell the patient is that you will be coming close to the patient and also you will be introducing uh, the otoscope or the little the little instrument which is this and show this to the patient that you will be putting this in the ear. Then you go through your checklist of what you need for the examination. What you need is an otoscope and then check that the light source is good and then the batteries need not, uh, do not need any changing. After that you have to choose the appropriate size of the oroscope which is based upon the size of the patient's ear and after you choose the appropriate oroscope then if you need hearing tests, uh, to, if you need to demonstrate the hearing test then you need the appropriate tuning fork which for hearing tests is 256 hertz. Tell the patient that you will be coming close to the patient and also that you will be putting your uh, index finger on the patient's chin as a part of the procedure. How you hold the otoscope? You hold the otoscope like a pen and this is then you can use your ring finger to stabilize the otoscope on the patient's head so that uh, there is no tremor in your hand or and the otoscope doesn't tremble. You use your right hand to examine the patient's right ear and you use the left hand to examine the patient's left ear. You start your examination by inspecting the ear and the area surrounding the ear. Make a comment about any sinuses, any discharge, whether there are any scars and also whether there is any erythema or skin changes around the ear and then on the pinna. After you examine the pinna, you next need to examine the external auditory canal. For this, you have to straighten the external auditory canal, so warn the patient that you will be gently moving the ear, but you are pulling the ear outwards, upwards and backwards, that is outwards, upwards and backwards to in, in an attempt to straighten the external auditory canal and then holding the otoscope like a pen you're gently introducing the otoscope into the patient's ear and then you might want to keep your index finger on the patient's chin to stabilize the otoscope. While examining the external uh, canal make a comment whether there is any wax, whether there is any discharge particularly blood or pus and whether you can see the tympanic membrane or not introduce the otoscope a little more and then look at the tympanic membrane. Make a comment about the whether you can see the tympanic membrane clearly or not, whether you can see the handle of the malleus, whether the tympanic membrane is under any tension and also make a comment about the cone of light. Always give your findings first and then if you are confident about the diagnosis, give your diagnosis to the examiner but otherwise tell the examiner that you will discuss these findings with your senior and then take their opinion. After completing the uh, otoscopy, you then have to proceed to the hearing tests. The hearing tests are the Rennie's test and the Weber's test. Rennie's test is to demonstrate whether the air conduction is better than bone conduction and that is a normal finding. The way you demonstrate Rennie's test is that first show the patient what they are expected to hear and feel. Hit the tuning fork 
on a hard surface like one of your bony prominences and put it either on the head of the patient or on the sternum of the patient so that the patient can appreciate the vibrations from the tuning fork and then also put the tuning fork close to the ear so that they can hear the vibrations of the tuning fork. Once they can appreciate, hit the tuning fork again on a bony prominence and put it first on the mastoid process which is just behind and above the ear and ask the patient to tell you when they can no longer appreciate the vibrations. But at that point, bring the tuning forks close to the patient's ear and ask the patient whether they can hear it or not. Normally, they should be able to hear the tuning forks at this stage as air conduction is better than bone conduction and that is normal Rennie's test. Repeat the Rennie's test on the other side. After this, hit the tuning fork again on a bony prominence and put it right on the vertex of the patient, that is right on the middle of the forehead and ask the patient whether they can hear it in both the ears equally or whether they can hear it better in any one ear. In case in, in conditions of conductive deafness, they can hear better in the affected ear. That is, if there is conductive deafness in the right ear, the patient lateralizes to the right ear saying that they can hear better in the right ear. But in cases of sensory neural deafness, they can hear better in the opposite ear. After completing this, thank the patient and then also thank the examiner.